Rakuten is pioneering the world's first cloud-native mobile network with integration expertise and cloud lab innovation from Tech Mahindra. Joining me now are Tarek Amin, Chief Technology Officer at Rakuten Mobile Network, and Mani Singh, who is Global Head for Network Cloud Services at Tech Mahindra. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining thank me. You. Thank you. Tarek, when you sat down with that blank piece of paper to design and architect a new mobile network, what was your wish list? How did you go about balancing the risks of new technology against the potential rewards? So we had uh, you know, many options of how we build and construct this network, but one of the main motivation driving us is we obviously wanted to achieve a level of operational efficiency and elasticity that has not happened in telecom industry for a while. So if you look at the better past of the decade that we lived in, in telecom, what really has changed? So the 1G became 2, the 2 became 3, 4 became 5, but the underlying foundation has never changed. So the underlying foundation is still legacy network. When I say legacy, it still have hardware, software tightly coupled. Hardly any of the workloads are being moved to the cloud. And what we've been focused on as an industry is only what I call it the easy parts, which is about virtualization of the core infrastructure. But there's many tenets of this that I think has not been done right. I think the approach that we have taken when I tell you about the dreams that we, uh, we started with. Firstly, we wanted to build the world first uh, horizontal private cloud infrastructure that is not just only serving the, the control plane uh, workloads, but also the edge. So on the top of this private cloud, we wanted all the applications that are powering up the network to be virtualized. And when I say all, let's not forget the more complex one is the radio access. So this has been dreamed about, never been realized. And in Rakuten, we, we took a really very conscious approach that we're going to go and tackle this issue that the industry wanted to address, which is the virtualization of radio. And what I could tell you, what we're really, really happy about, as of February 4th, our network became a life, a life in every aspect that is completely virtualized, 100% carrying commercial traffic, including virtualization of radio access. This is the first uh, time that we really uh, industrialize now the virtualization of radio in a live telecom network, not in a lab. So that's a very, very big step for us. That in itself is only a small part of it, but it's a phenomenal um, a, a achievement. Um, we, the industry's been talking about virtualized RAN for, for some time, um, but I was going to ask, is, is it, is it actually at the stage where you can commercialize and rely upon it? Yeah, I mean, uh, look, uh, if you really ask, I mean, uh, most vendors in uh, around June of last year, the comments that we got, you guys are a bit crazy. This will not work. Um, you know, the software code base uh, is not scalable. You'll have too many issues. But you know what? One thing I will tell you: what is unique and different about Rakuten is really number one is our work culture. Our work culture and organization, all the way from our CEO to the individual employees, individual contributors, are um, they think a lot differently. And taking risk, of course, is uh, something we we did. But I call it it's a calculated risk. What we believed in and what we know that we are a software-centric organization. So Rakuten is a connectivity player. It's a platform player that understand and understood software very well. And to build such a network, I will be really honest with you, it's not trivial and it's not easy for other organization. I, I would argue they don't have the skills, the DNA and the culture that exists in our group. So we know that it's gonna, issues will happen, but we know that it could be addressed because that's the nature and the beauty about software. So the radio axis, when we launched uh, on 3rd of February, we had many issues, by the way, many, many issues. But because it is software fixing, identifying, and isolating problems and rolling out fixes to the problems happen in an agile manner that you would say it is impossible to happen in today's current radio axis network. So um, I am more confident today to tell you that it works, and not only works, it works remarkably well. So we went from not a POC, we're really into hardening the, net, the, the, the software today with Altio Star, and the performance is, at the, uh, performance is impeccable. And it's not in lab, it's commercial, and it's carrying real traffic. So we know, we know what else we have to do together with Altio Star, but we know that the, we have clarity to meeting our October launch timelines 
and deliver on a high quality radio network. Incredible. Um, Anishka, if I can turn to you, um, what work did Tech Mahindra contribute to, to, to getting all this working? And, and, and specifically, what have you done with uh, the Cloud Lab? The most important thing in such an innovative network is to try and get changes faster in the network. So because you, if you have to get velocity and speed, you need to ensure that you can do those changes without affecting quality. And for that reason, you need to have a state-of-the-art lab that will allow you to ensure those changes happen fast enough. That's why getting things like, for example, continuous integration and continuous deployment, CICD, uh, with concepts coming from IT um, and, and putting them on top of telecom networks is key. And that is what we are doing for Rakuten in setting up such a lab, ensuring that we work with all the vendors, all the respective vendors in the VNF domain, in the NFVI domain, in the MANO domain, and ensure they all come together to, to get that quality in the network. And that's the key uh, thing that we're doing at the moment. Because, you know, it's, it's hard enough doing the hardware um, and, and CICD you mentioned there. I guess it also involves a, a cultural shift and you've got, to be, you've got to think differently. The good news for us, thinking differently is not about rescaling. I mean, that's, that's the part I would tell you if you ask, what is our secret? Our secret, again, I emphasize is the people. And, and believe me, that is number one factor that is driving our ability to deliver on the results that we have achieved in a record time to deploy such a network. So um, I think that's something that I feel that we're a bit lucky that the company DNA and culture comes from IT centric organization. So it makes execution much, much easier for us to implement such a network. Mesh, when we look at um, the established operators who are transforming their networks, um, we've spent a number of years implementing SDN and developing NFV to implement, um, and yet adoption is very slow. Um, what, why is this and how do, how, how do we move beyond this? Um, I think there's one bottom line there. Where there is a will, there is a way. And, and, and what is happening is that across the globe, there are, there are operators who are actually trying to get there, but they're using old methodologies to get there. And there are operators who are sitting on the fence who are thinking, hey, I want this to mature enough and then I'm going to jump into there. And also there are operators who are thinking, hey, I'm going to be very, very brave and I'm j I'll jump in without realizing what's in there. So th there is a mix of those transformations happening. We do have successes happening around, but not to the extent that we see with Rakuten. The speed, the cost, the transformation that's happening. I think I do believe that we are actually at the cutting edge of technology with Rakuten. And to, to implement all this, when, when you look at your um, vendor mix and everyone who's in this, this, this chain and helping you out, what, what criteria do you use? Is, is it more important to have all that legacy expertise, always fresh thinking, um, open ecosystem, more important? Yeah, actually, if, uh, if, if you participated in our RFP process, I think you would find it uh, very unusual, actually. Because the, the discussions that we were having with the vendors was not necessarily about technology we were interviewing them about personality. We wanted to assess who has the right DNA because I, what I believed, I mean, at the end of the day, it is people that make products. So if, I, if we could find like-minded organizations that are willing to push the envelope and challenge themselves, uh, then we think these are the right vendor partners that should be taking part of this uh, innovation. And in, in fact, that's what we've done. So we didn't ask, hey, are you complying to all three GPP specifications? Mm -hmm. Show me in number of requirements. Our process is remarkably different. We're, we're going after just organizational compatibility first as a main criteria. And I think we made the right vendor choices in, in building this network. Is, does this imply in a way that um, the future business is, future business is kind of stacked against the incumbent CSPs? It's more... It, the, the, the new entrants have a better chance of benefiting simply because they haven't got all that legacy baggage to deal with. Even new entrants, I would argue not a lot of them probably would have taken the route that we have taken. So um, it is not given that because you're a green field, you must deliver on the innovation that Rocketon is doing. I think, um, as Manish talked, if there is a will, there is a way. First of all, people always in telecom are hesitant to apply any new technology. It's a conservative culture. The culture is really the problematic statement that exists in the industry we're in. Actually, I would argue, and I would ask you this question, how many innovation or startups that exist in telecom that comes alive? The number of new entrants into this space is very little. 
It is largely very little because I think the operators themselves are not supporting this incubation of the culture of a startup, the incubation of new innovators that come in telecom. It's been, it's been stagnant. So, you know, that's why we, we invested and, and uh, supported Altio Star. We want to see such companies come into this mix. We want to see such companies that are powering up radio access to, to deliver on this innovation. I think we are really missing in, in the industry we're in. Even if I'm legacy network, meaning I still have legacy workloads to deal with, this, this uh, idea that because I have existing legacy network, I cannot move to new network architecture, I think is false. It's really an overstated idea that I don't think has merits. I think there are many strategies one could take, you know, to go from legacy to new. It is not just because you're, we're greenfield, um, we're able to achieve this. I would argue even existing operators, if they apply the same thinking, there is a way for them to move faster and quicker to how new networks should be constructed and built. Now, we, we talked about the very important RAN aspect. Um, what about the, the operations uh, of the network and the operation center? Are we looking at um, creating next generation operation centers, more IT centric? Um, and, and I think it's, it's coming from the fact that the IT world is very used to running lots of servers with very less number of people. Um, and I think from a, an, from a networks perspective, that's never been done before. I mean, we are used to having lots of people trying to actually manage those little bits and pieces and, and then try to cotton wool them, right? You know, put them in a very, very fragile kind of situation and not do any changes in the network so that I can put lots of people around it. Now, that has to be broken with this kind of ideology. And that has, can be only broken with lots of automation in place, lots of AI coming in, lots of things that machines will have to do for us. And that can help you reduce the overall operating costs. And that's what the next generation knock should look like. It should look like something like, you know, you've got a single person sitting there who can manage the whole network. Of course, that's a dream, but we can get there if we start believing in it. Now, when we use the term uh, cloud native uh, and apply it to a full cloud native network, what exactly does that mean in your case? Can you, can you talk, talk us through sort of core, core to, to, to edge uh, architecture? The, the way I would describe it is, again, starting with you must have this foundation layer. The foundation layer is the private cloud. And the private cloud cannot be one such that it's only delivering the workloads on large data center. So what we call our private cloud is a multi-data center, multi-tenancy architecture with mobile edge compute support from day zero. Mobile edge compute could only be enabled if you have user plane control plane separation into the architecture, which Rakuten already has. So second thing is the abstraction of this mystery about hardware. Our hardware, if you come to it, actually, maybe the first question you'll ask, my goodness, this looks like an IT server. Well, in fact, it is. There is nothing special about this hardware. So we, we purchased and developed our own hardware, but it is based on an x86 compute platform that is currently being deployed you know, at scale across the world. So that's another tenant that we've done, simplified our hardware architecture. It is not complex. It, the, the SKUs that are managing this network, there's only four SKUs. In a traditional telecommunication network, there is hundreds of hardware SKUs, and this hardware is highly proprietary. So in our case, it's definitely um, uh, a commodity. You know, the other, the other big tenets of cloud is elasticity. You know, how do you take capacity management that I call it in today's network as a brute force operation, where you have masses, massive number of people monitoring network, monitoring utilization, issuing purchase orders, monitoring build of material and installation, commissioning, integration. What a complex world. In our network, the entire workloads are elastic which means with a closed loop automation, the virtual machines of packet core or virtual machines that are running IMS core or even the radio axis detect that I have reached utilization and auto uh, scale up or scale down depending on the requirement. And these things do not require human being to really manage this uh, elasticity. And that's the, so when we talk about efficiency of cloud and cloud native, it is not just about the, the, the elegance of saying cloud native is what we're after. The end result is the operational efficiencies that this will deliver. That is the advantage of cloud after all. And so, um, uh, you know, and, and lastly, automation. So for us is the discovery of any manual effort 
the way that we apply organizationally our site reliability engineers what they do is discover manual activity define business logic and automate so that's culture and DNA access automate 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 remove everything that you used to do manually and deliver it through a hundred percent automation but I also would argue our way of automation is very very different in today's world there's two ways to do automation one cloud open loop automation that still requires a human being to look at the result that comes out of logic and then say I accept and implement in our case we just have a complete closed loop automation meaning we we trust that we have done a good job on building our AI machine learning algorithms and our business logic has been tested and validated and then we made we make it completely closed loop I don't want to intervene you know on any decision making um, uh, into this process so I think that's also a very very differentiated way of how we approach automation can I close by asking both of you um, you know how, how are you going to continue collaborating together to get to the October launch and, and, and beyond I mean what, what more challenges are you, are you needing to look at and, and overcome I think we as Tech Mahindra are we are vendor agnostic SI so we come in as a systems integrator so we are fully committed to, to Rakuten's success and for that reason, we are planning to continue to forge the partnership with various other areas of engagement. As expected, we would want to continue uh, to with the labs itself from going from strength to strength to deliver quality within the 5G labs. Um, and also ensure that the Rakuten launch in September, October timeframe happens smooth and it goes through fine. Um, we do expect to continue to engage in several other areas and that will be the future. Great. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, um, you know, t together with Tech Mahindra, our next big challenge that we have to address is building that next generation operational organization. So we, we're really having um, brilliant moments talking about the construct of this uh, North Star operational organization and how do we build the organization and structure to deliver uh, uh, you know, uh, an operational headcount efficiency that has never been thought possible in telecommunication. So this is, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to continue this engagement because it requires people that think differently. And I think Tech Mahindra for us is a company that aligned very well with the DNA and culture uh, and we have common goal and objective. That will be our next big, big thing that we want to do together. Great. Well, gentlemen, thank you both very much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank very you. Much. Thank you very much.